My friends, our second text for today. You know what? Uh, before I do that, let me share something with you. This Sunday, three years ago, was the very first Sunday that I had with you. This Sunday. So I am now in my fourth year here with you, and I am so grateful and thankful. It is an absolute privilege to be serving God with you in this place. But it dawned on me this morning as I was getting ready, I said, Palm Sunday, I know that Sunday. Yes, this is when it began here at Lake Highlands Prayers. All right. Now, our second text for today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, the first 11 verses. But of course, before I begin to read, I have to ask, Bible check. Bible check, all right, let's see them, absolutely wonderful, 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 wonderful. We want you to bring your Bibles when you gather here in God's house, when we gather here together. All right, Matthew chapter 21, the first 11 verses, please listen and read along. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you. And at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophets. Say to the daughter of Zion, see, your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the coat, placed their cloaks on them, and sat Jesus on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you again for this day, your blessings and all that you have done. All that we have witnessed, for we know that you're using these things to prepare us to hear a word from you. So right now, make me less. Allow me to decrease so that you can increase and become more. And fix us by clearing our minds, opening our hearts and unstopping our ears so we can hear from you. And upon hearing from you, we want to leave this place better than the way we arrived. Yes, yes, Lord, we want to walk out of here better than the way we walked in. Through Christ, we ask it all. Amen. Amen. If you would, please, turn to a neighbor, look at them good, and repeat after me. Friend, on this Palm Sunday, the sermon is, who is this? Amen. Who is this? Every year, just about every year for several years now, I attend a special event for people like me who enjoy comic books. Every year. The event is called Comic Con. And now, I, they have Comic Cons all over the world throughout the year. But I prefer attending the Dallas Comic Con because I like sleeping in my own bed. I can just drive over to the convention center, I can just drive on back home. I prefer the Dallas Comic Con. But you got people that come to the Comic Con dressed like many of their favorite characters, many of them wearing masks. So you don't know who they are. We don't know who they are. 
made me think of the characters that they come dressed up as, like Batman and Daredevil and Superman, Spider-Man, Wonder Woman. You see, all of these individuals in the comic book world, they all have secret identities. Secret identities. You know, Batman is Bruce Wayne. Superman is Clark Kent. Wonder Woman is Diana Prince. Daredevil is Matt Murdock. And Spider-Man, do you all know who Spider-Man is? Yeah, yeah. Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Now, each of these characters are surrounded by folks they know very well, and these individuals think that they know them back. But many of them don't know that they're superheroes. And then many of them who are also superheroes don't know their secret identities. They don't know who these individuals really are. Kind of sort of makes you wonder, doesn't it? What kind of mask are other folks wearing? What kind of mask? Are people wearing around you every day? What kind of mask do you wear around people every day so that we, do we really know each other? Do we really know who we are? Every time I read through this passage and other passages similar to it, I'm always amazed as to how many folks knew very little about Jesus, spent years with Jesus, knew very little about him. And there are numerous occasions when the disciples, they acted and responded as if they had no clue as to who Jesus was. And these were individuals who walked with Jesus for three years, walked with Jesus, ate with Jesus, they hung out together. They should have known Jesus better than anyone else, and many times they acted as if they had no idea who he was. There were hundreds and thousands of people who heard Jesus teach and preach, and they followed him. Oh, hello, somebody. This is long before Twitter. You know, on Twitter, you can follow somebody, you think you know them like they are your own personal friend. But long before Twitter, long before Snapchat, these individuals followed Jesus great distances to come and hear Jesus, and they didn't know him. They didn't know him. For the readers of this gospel, the gospel of Matthew, Matthew wants to make sure, wants to make it perfectly clear that this individual, this man, is Jesus. And Matthew wants to point out the simple fact or prove that this man is Jesus the Christ because Jesus fulfilled Scripture. Jesus fulfilled the prophecies of old. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout Daughter of Jerusalem, see your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fall of a donkey. That's Zechariah. Chapter 9, verse 9. Matthew is intentional in helping us to understand that this person is the Christ. That the Old Testament speaks of, that the Hebrew scriptures teach of. This is a major premise of this gospel. It's trying to connect Jesus with the prophecies of the Old Testament. And there are some major things, however, that have happened that may have camouflaged the identity of Jesus the Christ. One of which, Caroline read just a few moments ago that we find in the, the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark, Jesus heals a leper and then tells the leper 
to go directly to the priest. And don't tell anyone what's happened. Go directly to the priest. The reason for that is that only the priest could clear you. Only the priest could allow you to go back into society, to go back to your family. Jesus said, don't tell anyone. Go directly to the priest. And guess what? Oh, the leper told everybody. Everyone, perhaps on his way to the priest. Look at me. I'm cleansed. I'm no longer leprous. Look at me. Oh, Jesus. Jesus did it. Yeah, he's over there. Healed me real good. Hey, you want to know something? I was a leper, and now I'm not. Because of Jesus. Jesus did it. Yeah. He told everyone. Everyone. And the end result, the scripture says, the end result is that Jesus could no longer enter a city openly without being mobbed. But our people rushing him from every direction. So what did this do? This fixed it so that Jesus had to have his ministry in the country. Jesus was, if you will, restricted to being a rural preacher. He couldn't go into the city anymore. So when Jesus finally makes it to the big city, makes it to Jerusalem, the citizens of Jerusalem Ask an interesting question. Who is this? Who is this? Or who is he? Now, perhaps this is not as uncommon as we would think. You see, Jerusalem was the big city. It's like living in New York or living in Los Angeles. If you live in New York, you don't go outside of New York to find news news finds you when you're living in a city like New York or like Los Angeles. And the Jerusalem citizens didn't know who Jesus was. Perhaps because he, according to Matthew, had not made it to Jerusalem before. At least not as an adult. He had not been to Jerusalem before. So he comes to Jerusalem perhaps for the very first time and they don't know who he is. And he doesn't just show up, you know, as a tourist, as someone coming to visit family. Oh, there's a parade when he shows up. People walking in front of him and behind him singing his praises. But his entrance into Jerusalem showed the type of king he was rather than the type of king people would have expected. You see, kings didn't ride donkeys. They rode horses. Matter of fact, they rode white horses, not donkeys. So there's a confusion perhaps among the Jerusalem citizens as they look at this man riding a donkey Got all these people laying palm branches in front of him, behind him, singing Hosanna to the son of David, Hosanna in the highest. So perhaps they're thinking, you know, if this guy really is related to King David, out of the line of King David, then yeah, he should be a king, but he's not acting like a king. He doesn't look like a king. He's on a donkey. I got two of those. Kings would not ride donkeys. My cousin's got donkeys. And he's an idiot. <laughs> Kings would not have donkeys. So there must be something wrong here. And there was something wrong. But it wasn't the who is this question. It's the response. It's the answer to the question, who is this? The people say, this is Jesus. 
the prophets from Nazareth in Galilee. That's wrong. Because Jesus was much more than a prophet. Much more than a prophet. His demeanor, yes, was unexpected. Jesus was meek. Meek. And I want you to understand that meekness is not weakness. To be meek means to be humble. It means to be modest. And if we're honest, many people in this world today could use a dose of meekness. Jesus knew about meekness. Blessed are the meek, Jesus says in Matthew 5 and 5. Why? For they will inherit the earth. Jesus knew what it meant to be meek. And the whole point of Matthew, including the passage that we have here from Zechariah, was to show that the Hebrew prophecies had unmasked. The Messiah. The whole point of Matthew is to give us the simple fact that it's a spoiler alert. We know exactly who he is. This is the Messiah. The Christ whom we've been waiting on. So y'all should know who this is. But they didn't. They didn't know. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? If they didn't know who Jesus was, it kind of makes you wonder, how many of us really know who Jesus is? How many of us? You see, there are many folks who are members of the church, but they're not Christians. And there are many of us who are Christians, But we put Jesus in a box that we own. And we pull Jesus out when it's convenient for us. You know, when we don't really want to be meek. When we want to be seen. When we want to be heard. Then we pull Jesus out of the box. And we show Jesus to the world. You understand that? Pull them out on our own terms. We we got that fish on the back of our car. But it really doesn't apply when we're in traffic. Doesn't really matter. On 635 between 3 p.m. and 7 (laughs) p.m. You know what I'm talking about. We really, we only pray during the day. We only pray when it's time to eat. And then we pray quickly, in a hurry. We come to church. We we don't want to. No, but we come to church. Because if we didn't come to church, our poor dead mama would turn over in her grave. Uh, Listen closely. Dead people don't turn. They don't. They don't. And so many, so many of our sisters and brothers have painted such a harsh picture of Christ in this day and age. For many of us, Jesus is described by so many as judge and executioner. Both. I don't know about you all, when I was growing up, a lot of folks kind of sort of used Jesus like Jesus was a Doberman pincher. Try to sick Jesus on you when you did something wrong. Like Jesus was hiding off in the bushes, waiting for you to mess up, pounce on you, send you straight to hell. Unfortunately, many people still do that, still function that way. So, if you're wearing yoga pants, you're going to hell. If your lips touch wine, you're going to hell. You're going to go to hell if you wear eyeshadow anywhere except around your eyes. 
You're going to go to hell if you have tattoos. You're going to go to hell if you go to midnight movies. Oh, my goodness. And if you listen to or dance to or have danced to or used to listen to the Rolling Stones or Florida Georgia Line or Drake or Adele, you sure enough going to hell. This is a hellacious depiction of Christ that none of us can live up to. None of us can fare with. As if that's all Jesus wants to do is to catch people in sin and send them to hell. Well, listen, uh, if you believe this, you don't know Jesus either. You don't know him as well. For Jesus said, I did not come into this world to condemn the world, but that the world through me might be saved. That was the point of the Lord's coming. So here's the question. Do you know who he is? Do you know who he is? Oh, he's the ancient of days. The first and the last the bright and morning star, the alpha and omega, the author of our faith, the creator of the universe. That's who he is. And there are many faiths and many religions who will tell us that Jesus was a prophet but was not divine. As Presbyterians, my friends, we respect the beliefs of others, but not at the expense of of standing firmly on what we know and what we believe, that Jesus is the Son of God who rode into Jerusalem under a chorus of hosannas from a crowd who would five days later scream, crucify him, crucify him. We know who he is. He is the Christ who possessed the power to stop his own crucifixion but didn't because it was God's will that he died for you and for me. We know who he is. He is the Christ, the lover of our souls who rode into Jerusalem, worthy of the praises he received, who died on the cross, still worthy of the praises that he has received. But the greatest, the greatest was yet to come. What is that, you ask? And I'm so glad that you asked. But let me answer it by putting it to you this way. Come back here tomorrow. Come back here Tuesday. Come back Thursday evening. Be here Friday afternoon. The best is yet to come. And please don't miss on next Sunday. Because Jesus has been unmasked. We know who he is. We know what he's done. And we know what he is going to do. Oh, and it is a blessing for each and every one of us. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, receive this today. Amen.